I was like, huh? Oh, hey everyone. It's good to see all of you. Uh, don't worry about me, I'll be fine. Soon, I think. Uh, you know, actually, maybe you could help me with something. So, I'm in a little bit of a pickle. Huh? You know, uh, like a conundrum. What? Um, I have a problem that I could use your help on. Oh, <laughs> I probably should have just uh, said that in the first place, right? Sorry. So, okay, I have this sweatshirt that I love. Oh, hey, Mom. Oh, hey. Okay. That's a cute sweatshirt. I like it. Oh, thanks. It's my fave. That's my favorite too. Uh, we have the same sweatshirt. Oh yeah. Actually, I think that's mine. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure this is my sweatshirt. Um, where'd you find it? Did you find it on the couch? Yeah, but I mean, I left mine on the couch too, I think, or maybe near the couch, uh, when I was like, you know, running out the door to get something from the store. I think that's mine. So you see, I think the sweater is mine, and she thinks it's hers. Hmm. I feel like there's something in the Bible that I could learn that would help me out here. Oh, wait, I remember. There's this pretty interesting story in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, and it isn't really well known. In fact, it was even kind of new to me, but I remember reading it just the other day. It's found in the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible in chapter 26. So it all starts with this guy named Isaac. Now, scripture tells us that the Lord blessed Isaac and he became a very rich man. And in those days, rich looked different than it does today. For Isaac, it means that he had sheep and he had goats and he had maybe cattle and cows and horses and he had servants and many people in his family. But there was a group of people that lived nearby. They were called the Philistines. And these guys, they did not like Isaac and his riches. And so they grew jealous. They decided to do something that was really hurtful. And they went around to all of Isaac's wells and they filled them up with dirt. Now, I know <laughs> that sounds so weird, uh, but think of it like this. So back in those days, wells were essential for their lives. The Israelites lived in a desert Water was super important. There were no stores to buy water bottles. There were no water fountains at the park. There were no deliveries that, that could be delivered to your house. So these wells were life for Isaac and all of his family and his livestock. And without the wells, they would die. So basically not only were the Philistines being rude by filling the wells with dirt, they were basically telling Isaac that they wanted him to just die. Then, then there's this guy named Abimelech. All right, try saying that three times fast. Ready? Okay, go. Abimelech, 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 Abimelech. That was like seven times. Abimelech, Abimelech. So he tells Isaac, go somewhere else for you have become too powerful for us. Man, those are fighting words if I ever heard them. I mean, this guy is telling Isaac that he needs to go, that he and his family need to take all their stuff, their tents, their supplies, their homes, their food, their people, their animals, you get the point, and move. Let's see now what Isaac did. I mean, I bet he fought back. I mean, the land belonged to him and his family in the first place. So Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley, where he then set up his tents and settled down. He reopened the wells his father had dug. What? That's nuts. So Isaac says, okay. And to keep the peace, he moves his family and all their stuff and their animals to another place. And then he opens up the wells that belong to his forefathers and then his servants dig new ones and they discover fresh new water. But then the shepherds from the area start complaining to Isaac. They start saying that the water is theirs and they argued about those wells. So Isaac's servants left those wells and went to dig other ones. Now guys, this isn't like just digging in the sand. <laughs> digging these wells was back breaking work. 
Isaac and his servants had every right to fight back. Those wells and that water was theirs, but instead they dug new wells. But the scripture says that there was another argument over that well too. This happened again, one more time. Isaac's servants moved along, built another well, and then that well was argued over. For sure this time, Isaac and his servants got mad and fought back, right? Nope. In fact, they moved on again and built another well. And this time, no one argued over it. At last, the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in the land. Okay, so at first glance, when I read this story, I was like, huh? I didn't really understand why this story was recorded for us to learn. Uh, why would this story about digging wells and then filling them with dirt and then fighting over the water be in the Bible? And then I realized it is there so that we can learn from how Isaac reacted. See, Isaac had every right to fight over the land and the wells. They belonged originally years and years ago to his father, Abraham. And then his herdsmen dug up their new ones. Those wells and that land was rightfully his. And yet, when faced with the challenge, when others said it belonged to them, Isaac chose peace. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Phew, I mean, that's huge. I bet it wasn't easy for Isaac to choose peace. He had to move and find new wells and all of that. See, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we want to fight, to argue and talk back. Maybe we feel like we're right. Maybe we feel like we didn't do anything wrong or we feel hurt or misunderstood or even left out. But that is where our Bible verse for this month comes in. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Isaac was doing all he could to choose to live in peace with those around him. Last week, Pastor Lauren talked about the vertical and the horizontal relationships we have. The vertical represents peace with God and us. The horizontal represents our peace with each other. See, God made peace with us when Jesus died on the cross, and he wants us to make peace with with others. Choosing the horizontal, choosing to be a peacemaker, is really important. It shows others that we value them more than being right or winning an argument. And this can be so hard. It is so tempting to just want to keep on going, to keep talking and to keep arguing, to keep claiming something for ourselves. But choosing the horizontal, Choosing peace with those around us instead of being right is our responsibility if we have chosen to follow Jesus. For Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. Matthew 5, 9. So I guess I know my answer, huh? Let's see now. Um, you know what, mom? Even though it's my favorite, I know it's your favorite too. Plus you look really good in it. You okay. can wear it. Thanks for thinking of me too. You know what? A sweatshirt is not as important as the peace that's between us, right? Totally. Well, actually, MJ beat me to it. But did you see how she chose the horizontal over what may have been rightfully hers? In doing that, she showed me that she cared about me. So this week, how can you choose the horizontal? How can you choose peace over the argument? Maybe you can listen to what your parents have to say instead of talking back, even if it feels hard. Or you can choose to stop and think when you really want to keep on talking and get the last word in. Try reflecting. That means to think back on times when you had an argument. Did you use words like, what I'm just trying to say is, but I'm just saying, well, you always, and you never, and then work hard to listen instead. And focus. 
Focus on seeing the other person as better than yourself. And last but not least, ask God for help because these are not easy things to do and we need God to help us. So let's pray right now and ask God to help us choose the horizontal, choosing peace with others. Dear God, thank you for the example of Isaac and the wells. Even though it seems like a silly story, it shows us how to choose peace with others instead of an argument. We pray right now that you would show us ways to choose the horizontal, to choose to be a peacemaker. Please give us wisdom and guidance in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, everyone, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And don't forget that we have in-person ministry happening every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And if you are a fourth or a fifth grader, we have a special in-person ministry just for you that happens on Wednesday nights at 6.30 on our church campus. See you there.